Well, Can say we hello to uh, Swerve Strickland. He joins us right here in the Action Sports Shacks 24-7 Network Studios. And he's got the belt with us uh, as well with him, uh, Brett Martineau and Casey Kurtz back on the Brett and Austin Show. Congratulations on a big uh, Sunday night, by the way. Thank you very much. We made history, man. Like yeah. I said. You absolutely did make history. Uh, we'll get him on camera here in just a moment. Uh, Rob, if you need it, yeah, there you go. You got it. Uh, the big camera's right up there, Swerve. You know how to find the camera, man. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Look at that belt. That is massive. That is yeah. not like any of the ones yeah. you get at like Walmart if you're trying <laughs> oh, to pay twenty four ninety nine. It's like half of that. And you that also is... don't got to fight Samoa Joe for those. Types. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you just got to go to the cash register for that. All yeah. right. I just asked you before you came on. I said uh, how what a huge night it was Sunday. Yeah. Uh, but seriously, put it in some context for us what Sunday night meant and what the last couple of days have been. Uh, now that you're the world champ, last couple of days have been like a whirlwind. Uh, just. I was saying it earlier before today. I was just, it was more like you had to just empty your mind of anything you had going on. The, the, any issues that you had, any problems, your body ailments, whatever, like issues at home, issues with your job, whatever. Empty your mind and you got to just start fresh and just build from there. So the day of is just like, first off, early in the day, I did my Swerve City podcast with uh, Adam Copeland. So I was like, Start off with a great positive note, so we got that locked in. So that's going to be coming to the Source City podcast coming up really, very soon. Um, running around, um, just making sure everything's set in order, and because it's going to be a long night, your main eventing, Dynasty. Like I'm hearing Who's House, Source House throughout the hallways of the arena, which is amazing. So you you can understand what people are here for. You understand what people are ready for. And they're just wondering, like, are we going to get what we paid for? Yeah, yeah. Are we like that's what that's the number one thing uh, as as like dealing with the fan base. Are we going to get what we paid for for flying all the way over here, buying a ticket, coming to this arena, enjoying the show? But it's a long show, so you're in it for the long haul and staying for the main event. Because like after um, a Will Osprey and Brian Danielson, right. It's like, okay, we can go home now from that. But no, we're invested in what is the outcome of the main event. And I think we told that story business-wise very, very successfully with the culmination of myself making history as the first African-American AEW world champion in the company's history. And just one more to add to the history books and pro wrestling history like alongside like Ron Simmons, a Kofi, you know, a Mark Henry, a Booker, like, like to be – and that, like that, talk, that talking point to be amongst those greats, those goats, is means the world to me. So you could feel the anticipation they'll build throughout the day. It's oh, yeah. really what you're getting at. Yeah, <laughs> that's like. Oh yeah. I mean, like a rush like you've never had. Uh, unlike anything I've ever had. Yeah. Unlike anything, like insane. And then you turn around though, quick. I mean, right back at it. So I mean, is do you get to enjoy it? I like mean, I you're said, soaking this thing up. I, I had I had my time to soak it in. It was awesome and incredible uh, moments and a uh, celebration later that night. My attorney manager brother uh, Tony Risha set up a huge surprise party at a local restaurant, and like Jericho came through, g- gave a speech. Awesome. Like uh, all my my whole crew, my Keith Lucas from the Lucas Brothers, Oscar winners, you know, Flash, Prophet, a cat. Like these are Grammy winning people, friends of mine that I work with that are just there. My kids well, I was, my f- kids were flown out as a special surprise. So they watched while I didn't even know. I thought they were home. They were really out in St. Louis. Good stuff. Good <laughs> so stuff. It was just an amazing moment. But, yeah, it just means the world. And I just I, I felt like it meant something to everybody else in the fan base watching it. Everybody in the crowd felt something, and they connected with it. Whether It doesn't matter if you were African-American, black, white, Asian, like Indian, like Native American, like Latino, it doesn't matter. Like they saw a representation, like a triumph, and I think that story resonates with anybody. Sort of. You talked about it in your like post press conference a little bit, and you just mentioned it with Kofi, and just talking mm-hmm. about that moment. I remember when Kofi won the like I was fun, yeah. like that was a an all time moment for me as a wrestling oh, yeah. fan. Now like you're gonna have that with fans, and like young fans are gonna come up and remember this moment, this unbelievable match that you guys had and now what you can be for kids like has that sunk in yet like what that's going to mean just for the rest of your life it's, like you're going to be a yeah icon. it's still it's still so fresh yeah it still feels very fresh to like it's too it's too new to feel the long lasting effects that it might right. have like a kofi or something like that but i've 
I always shout him out because that's a big inspiration. It's like, man, I want to try to recreate that in my own way. How do I, how do I have that moment? You know, and I wanted to push as hard as I could to give the best story, give the best unique me, because Kofi was just a unique him, the new new day, and uh, was a very unique him them to make that story special. And everybody felt that, felt the pain, felt the history that he went through to climb to get there. It took him what, what was the eleven years right, yeah. to get to that. So that was amazing. Like I'm, I'm like, okay, I don't have that eleven year story, but I have <laughs> something that I can really pull into to pull people into ride with me from like a short period period of time getting to know me in my like only two years in all elite wrestling and and another thing it was just like i had to like kind of like expect people not to know the 12 13 years it took me for me to get there i gotta start you off with this story the genesis is right here right now you can't assume that everybody knew at all some people know but the majority i still have to gain new fans and new following to understand this is the intro introduction to swerve strickland you know um, start with this story now and ride it through like the mid card, the undercard, um, doing pre shows, and I still never done a main card of um, Forbidden Door. I've always only done the kickoff shows. You know, um, uh, last year's Revolution, I wasn't even on. You know, there's still a lot of like holes in that, and right. that was like okay, I didn't make those. What if I made those like my motivation, my story for people to really understand if feel like this is why this character has to go to these lengths i have to like come at a hangman page i have to attack him in a different way i challenged him to take his opportunity because he he was just too content he took it for granted i'm starving i'm hungry if i had that opportunity you know i'd be champion too you know maybe quicker i don't know you know you you got a lot of favors handed to you show me how good you really are and i challenged him for that and i did exactly what I said. So it was that whole story and pathway of just taking back what I felt like I was, de- I deserve or was never given or opportunities. So that's why I kind of did the inspired Killmonger look. It was like, I'm not like being just coronated and given the throne. No, yeah. I have to go and take it myself, you know? So there was that mentality and story. You try to like, let these subliminals play out and let the fans kind of feel that and understand and watch it. And then like really like, feel a little bit more deeper than just a match for the championship. It's just like so much more story behind it. Swerve Strickland with us here on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network, uh, All Elite Wrestling, a world champion, and uh, All Elite Wrestling in town this week at Daly's Place uh, with AEW Dynamite coming up tomorrow and AEW Collision Rampage on Saturday. You mentioned your story from the military to get into wrestling, and, mm. and that's part of it. There's yeah. the music element of it. But I feel like when you just shared what you shared – the story and telling the story is important to you yeah. as much as the entertainment, right? As much as the, the victory, as much as the athleticism, yeah. everything else that goes into uh, wrestling and what you do for a living. How important will the story be from here now to evolve as you're capturing more eyeballs, attention, and and really put yeah. on probably the biggest spotlight you've ever been under? That's the challenging part of this whole thing. It's like the story is like, I always say it's like a Rubik's Cube that's always moving. Mm. Like you're always you're gonna figure out one side, but then the other side starts moving, and you're like, okay, let me figure out then that side, and then the other one. You're never gonna complete the full thing. So for me, it's just like constantly trying to figure out this puzzle that's ever moving because the business is ever moving. It's not even just a wrestling business you're competing with anymore. It's the entertainment business yeah. in general because all of it's just all like overlapping and everybody's colliding and like trying to share the everyone. space. You yeah. got to share it now, you know. Um, So uh, now you're seeing content creators become like champions and compete. So it's just like you got to compete with other entertainments. Content creators are getting in boxing. So now it's just like, okay, where does this fit in? Where does this flow? What what also is like what is like a Tony Khan? What how where does he want to take the direction of the company? Where now now obviously he's taking it in the direction of like Swerve and building that. Now it's like, okay, where do I play into that? How can I put my touch on it? Once again, create a unique me to the story and to the company. Um, Doing interviews, coming out here to speak with you guys, that's one way. Okay, how do I build off of that? What do I take like an accomplishment? How do I, I don't don't wanna sit on it, sit on it, settle on it. I wanna use that as a tool to power something else. And then when I create something with that, I gotta use that as a tool to power something else. And now that's the story being told. 
and now you get to play with things. And when, especially when people start picking up on it and like, oh, he's like, he has the new shoe. He has his own shoe now. Like that's what he was wearing. Oh, the shoe coordinates with the the guy in the music video that's in his Titantron. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh wait, but these guys have a documentary with the Lucas brothers who are Oscar winners that's coming out. Oh, this, well, that ties into that. So these are stories that I'm not necessarily telling. It's just what I'm doing, but they're kind of telling itself. Yeah, that's and cool. And if people deep dive enough, they'll have they'll find. And then somehow, some way, it'll make its way to television. So that's how I work, you know. It did, but when you got into when you're thinking about wrestling when you're 18 years old and yeah. a teenager guy, they did that element. You had no clue about that part of it, right? Oh, God, I'm sure no. this part is developed. That that part is that's evolved. A, yeah, you thought you were just jumping off ropes and winning championships and <laughs> I thought it, like I used to think it was just that simple to do yeah, yeah. and I got a rude awakening on that early on yeah and um but it was just like uh, some people take failures or um they misjudge something and they take those things as like uh just get they, they, they take it as a way to be discouraged when you can find a way to actually turn it into building and that's a learning tool. That's a learning craft. I'm like, okay, cool. Now I know what to build off of and what direction not to go. It's almost like taking the wrong direction in the city of Jacksonville. You're yeah, like, yeah. oh, that's cool. Found like, something new. Yeah, but but you're never lost because you can. You always know how to get your back, get your way back home. So you're never lost. Some people say like, oh, I'm lost in the city. No, how do you get home? Oh, I gotta get back on the road to go back. Like, so you're not lost. If you can always find your way home, you're never lost. Yeah. That's like not just. That's like a, a thing for life. Always, if you can find your way back to the starting point, you're just never lost. It's just getting back on the road and doing it again, finding a different route. Maybe, like, you know what I mean? So that's how I always looked at things and um, try to, like, navigate and once again find your own way. But don't be afraid to follow the path of others that's been successful and paved the way and done it. Don't like, don't be afraid to, like, copy a little bit. Don't be yeah, afraid yeah. to, like, like kind of jock from people that's been great, you know, like – We've done it. I've done it. Osprey's done it. Brian Danielson's done it. You know, Joe's done it. Like we've all done it to create our own way after that. So, have you mentioned some names there with Danielson and obviously Samoa Joe, who you've been in this unbelievable just battle with? Oh, but thank you. You talk about all the different people that are in AEW. How would you kind of, I guess, assess the talent? Just the pure wrestling ability. I mean, you saw it. Yeah. I mean, you were in it, but we saw it on the. On a dynasty, like just everyone is so talented. Like, yeah, how good are you guys right now? Like I said, um, at the press scrum, I was like, five of these matches could have main evented at any point. Mm. I just had like the the championship and a different story that told a just a broader strokes of the pay per view itself. Um, but man, like think about the talent that was left off the show that couldn't make it. You know, we didn't have a Moxley, we have no Adam Cole, and no MJF. We don't have like a Kenny Omega. We still didn't have. Um, um, no Wardlow, like at in ring competing, and no Sheeta, no Jamie Hayter, no Britt Baker. You know, the, like Mercedes still hasn't had an in ring, you know, debut. No Athena, she's still lurking out there. No Keith Lee. That's like that that roster right there who just wasn't even on could still make another show in itself. Yeah, yeah. So that's like that's why it's like so special for me to be up top there because I'm like looking with the rest of these guys. I'm like. Anybody can take this spot at any moment, and it is, you gotta be on your, on like, excuse my language, you gotta be on your shit hard, heavy, because these guys are here. You can't, we're not building to the next. Like, no, they're here now. Yeah, it's plenty of competition. It's competition, and it is t- stiff. And for me to be at the top right now, like literally, I literally feel like the face of the franchise building the dynasty, which is where this pivot meant like the era of starting this new thing it means so much and like uh, these are pe- these are teammates that I want on my side like these are these are guys like these are the Kansas City Chiefs these are people that you want to build like you know what I mean yeah. that's what you want and so it's just like an awesome feeling um the locker room is so supportive of everyone we want to have the best like pay-per-view we we that's our Monica, that's our selling point right now. We have like those, like, oh hell yeah, come back, pop, dap them up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Starting the show. How do we follow? I don't know, but you got yours. You killed that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Right now, now, and then like I look at Will, like we know what you're gonna do. Go out there, do that. Like so, like it's just the motivation of like everybody pushing each other, and that's how my era was. Like I come up with like the you know the Ospreys, and like he he's like 
four years younger than me, but we still like kind of in the same realm, like Ospreys and um, being like in the on the roads with like man, like uh, man, who else was on that road with us? Like Angelico is another one that's just been on there like grinding with us for so many years. That's our mentality. Just like we know what you're about to do, we know how you're about to get down. Go out there, kill it. We're gonna figure out a way to like try to try to one up, try it. to one up it, or just match it, or do whatever we can. But we know each other well enough to be like, yeah, this is, a, and that's the that's the locker room. That's cool behind the scenes, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah. Feel of of what that is and what you guys are building and have yeah. built really. But uh, you know, around here, we, Trevor Lawrence, we call him the face of the franchise. Absolutely. So we ask 100%. him questions all the time, like, hey, where are you? You know, what direction are you guys going in? Like, where is he yeah. going? Like, what? How do you view the franchise right now? What else do you need? And well, face of the franchise, uh, yeah. AEW, like where do you see it right now? Where do you see where you guys are at, where you're going, uh, you know? and where you can get to? And obviously, uh, you just on Sunday night became yeah. a bigger part of that. Right now, like I think um, getting this championship seen as on – get as many eyes seen on the championship is, is so important. Um, and it's not just like staying local with things. That's a very – very key point of things like Daily's Place right here. We're setting up, doing a lot of promotion to get Daily's Place, but we want the world, man. Like, we want, like, we got to fly to, like, I have no problem getting on a plane flying to uh, Wembley in London to promote for All In months down the road, even though we have 40,000 tickets already, like, distributed. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I want 40,000 more. We yeah, got to yeah. work to that. Yeah. Who has to do the work for that? Well, Tony Khan. Um, marketing team, you know, guys, all that. But I got to do the work. There's some ownership that. there. Yeah, I got to, I got to do that too. I, the face of the franchise has to be there for that. You know, there's no rest anymore. I got to take that one foot step forward more than the the all the other guys that want to be in that spot. I got to take that step forward, and that's a lot of humility, humble, but it's a lot of just um, drive and inspiration. Like I, I, I. I have to be aware of those kind of things and that responsibility. I'm in this position for a reason, and I got to show that where the steps forward we want to go. We want the world to know who AEW is. We want the world to be introduced to what all elite wrestling is all about because we are by far easily the best in ring product you're ever going to see in pro wrestling, the deepest roster in pro wrestling history. And I stand by that because I'm with these guys and girls every single week, and I'm watching the work they put in. The fans are watching the work they put in on a weekly basis, but there's so much more that goes behind that that you're not seeing this on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and then on Sunday pay-per-views and stuff like that. Like, I want to showcase that to get them in, to peek in, to want to open the door to come through. So that's where we're at and growing and now, like, having a the international movement of, like, an Okada and then, like, Rocky Romero getting this position that he is now. That helps us so much, you know, um, Kosha being brought in to expand the attendances and seating and ticketing and um, promoting in all these different ways. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's two different departments. Uh, how do I, how do I input myself to help in both? Now that I have this, mm. this is the way to steer that and to boost that and to get that improved and do more because we're at a great spot. But we want more. We want to push more. How do I help push more? You uh, you're you're a football fan. Oh, Who's yeah. your team? You're not you're not obligated to root for the Jaguars around here. Are you? I root for the Jags, of course. <laughs> like you know, like I, I like I've been to the Monday night Sunday night games here. Yeah, like, there I was go. there at both go. of them. You know, met Roger Goodell and all. It was an awesome moment. Um, but in my heart, which is funny enough, ironically, how this whole comes full circle, I was a St. Louis Rams fan. Okay, the greatest show on turf. Yeah, yeah. It was my first Super Bowl I ever watched by myself. I sat there in front of the TV and watched the whole game by myself. Kurt Warner's story was incredible to me. Marshall Falk is still one of my favorite players of all time. I love that team. It was probably one of the greatest offenses you ever seen put on football. Absolutely. Put up on a f- football field. Um, so coming back, win this yeah, championship, win the championship Atlanta, in St. Louis. Louis. That's pretty cool. A full circle moment. The only thing that was missing was Marshall Falk. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing. But, you know, other than that, perfect night. Yeah. Absolutely perfect night. Get him over here to Daly's yeah. Place tomorrow night and Saturday. Come on, Tony Yeah, Cunt. I mean, that's the only thing I'm missing. Yeah. But uh, Los Angeles Rams is my team. Yeah. Um, I, was, I, I wasn't I was there, but I was in Los Angeles when they won the Super Bowl. Cool. And I got to meet Aaron Donald later that night at the banquet in L.A. So, like, connections. He's a pretty uh, cool dude. <laughs> oh, he was excellent. Yeah. Um, I got his jersey hanging 
in the house now. This autographed jersey from the Super Bowl. I got. I went to auction that nobody bid for, so I was the only one. I wrote my name down <laughs> on a paper. Nobody bid for. It. I was like, "Hey, okay. win, big winner, <laughs> so, big winner." So I'll take that. But yeah, L.A. Rams is my team. All right. Well, around here, Trevor, uh, if you could be GM, I mean, and you might just just whisper Ooh. into Tony's ear for us. Maybe trade up and get one of those big receivers or something. See if he's willing to wheel and deal yeah. in that war room. I was in his. Uh, I was in his <laughs> office. I had, like got off the plane and dropped my stuff off. He's like, "Oh yeah, you can put my st- put your stuff in my office." So I like put my stuff in his office. and I seen like the big old scouting board and as like tiny little letters and like and i started doing i'm like <laughs> peeked at a couple players yep. like, who are we looking at in the cornerback position who are we looking at over here and there's all the measurements and like the yeah. the combine numbers and all that stuff We're like oh out of uh you know uh north ridge college and let's check him out so i peeked a little bit but that's about it that's <laughs> yeah you gotta keep your space yeah uh, in that in that landscape uh draft uh, is coming up obviously right in between uh two big shows for all elite wrestling here in jacksonville swerve strickland the new world champ uh here in studio with us action sports shacks 24 7 network you got anything I, I do. I, oh, I, please, please. I have a couple of things, actually. Not what you're thinking of, but it just sparked when you said you met Aaron Donald. When you are around other high, like an Aaron Donald yeah. or like a Trevor Lawrence, do you, it, it feels like, because you're a very complex guy, you can just tell by listening to you talk, do you take something from other Man, all-world um, athletes and kind of mold it into your own? I, I, oh, yeah. I, I try to. Like, just being around. But honestly, you know what you take? You take energy from them guys. You get inspiration just being around those guys, especially like – high caliber winners you just just being around them and seeing how they interact and seeing how they're just they, their posture their aura is that's contagious and it can rub off on you like have being around a rick ross like outside of just like what we did on the camera and like hanging out with those guys mm. like those guys are just infectious you get the feel of great people that are doing great things as history makers like rick ross is like on like the list of like 50 greatest rappers of all time and this guy's like following me on social media it's like or like bun b i can just go to bun b i can text them at any point call these guys like just having these wheelhouse and they're just like they're so relatable i get that from those guys um there's a lot I, like for me when i really started like transitioning on television it was like the flatbush zombies um great rap group love juice he's been on a couple of my pro- uh, uh, my music projects now Eric has got a solo project. Meech, incredible. All of these guys are great guys. Those guys inspire me the look of like transitioning to the colorful dreads and twisting things up, getting a little more dark here in different ways and just like hearing their voice on records. Like, man, I want promos to sound like that. I want the look to their music videos to kind of match this energy when I come out or when I'm like doing a backstage cut. Like, you know, I want that visual from their music video that they did here to kind of like match that aura so that i get inspiration from those people and just like like an asap a travis scott those guys inspire the hell out of me so much and those are the guys i want i like kind of like drive inspiration and, and as, as an athlete's standpoint like a meeting uh coach prime at colorado like that's inspirational in itself and he, hearing his mentality because i used to watch his interviews back in the day coach prime was like man he sounds like a pro wrestler cutting promos yeah, yeah. on these like you know, <laughs> he does. like he knows he knows he's dope <laughs> yeah like yeah. he knows he's dope he knows he's good it's like what like how could you not watch him how could you not invest in like whatever team he's going to whether it's niners falcons cowboys Ravens, like yeah, you're sucked in. You're sucked into that, you know. Like so, th- that's another inspiration, guys. Like so, th- th- to answer your question, yeah, like 100. percent That makes like, a lot of sense, by the way. Do you got from humble beginnings? You're not. It, some of these guys are boom, instant stars, yeah, right? Yeah. And so you learn to that life or that. But then you you grow into potentially now right. star, world champ, all those things, and you almost got to turn that on. And be like, hey. Um, I'm kind of here. Like, I've got to learn to be that guy, right? I mean, be the face of the franchise. Yeah. Like, you, that's not how it started. you got to no, learn to be that guy. Like a Trevor Lawrence, we say all the time. He's always been the guy. He's yeah. comfortable being the guy. Yeah. Because in high school, he was the guy. In college, he was the guy. He was the face of college football. He was the face of the franchise here. He knew he was going to be the n- number one pick. But 
when you grow into that, there's got to be something sooner or later hanging around folks like that that clicks. Been like, oh, yeah. okay, this is how you carry yourself. Yeah, like, if I'm gonna be the face, right? Like I'm pretty sure in the off season he was like he hangs around a Peyton. He I'm pretty sure he hands he hangs around an Eli. He hangs around you know a Kurt Warner. Hangs around those guys and people that have won at the biggest level. Yeah, yeah. That there is, you know, that inspires you. That gets in your that gets in your head and you doesn't leave. Especially like someone like as motivated and like dedicated to this sport as uh, Trevor Lawrence is. Like, is it, you're gonna you're gonna be getting those results that you want soon. Very, very soon because it's just it's going to rub off on you. I got to ask you because you're the face of the franchise, right? I, I wasn't sure if I was going to ask, but you're the face of the franchise. Mm-hmm. You guys on AEW made a decision a couple weeks ago. You put out a little backstage video that yeah. kind of got the world talking, the wrestling world. And I, I think everybody feels a certain type of way about it, but you guys decided to put it out. What was your thoughts when like you, you found out or were involved with knowing that that video was going to go out, you guys are going to play it on yeah. TV and what that – kind of was going to look like when everyone saw it and their response on social media? Um, I was actually sitting in uh, the seated position right next to Tony Khan when they, they were about to play it because really? I was, like, intrigued. I was like, okay, here we go. Because, like, in, with decisions like that, choices like that, you have to trust in that Tony is doing it for a reason. This man is running a right. franchise, an NFL franchise, you know, with, like, all the elements that goes into that. He's built this company on his like he did this. He chose to do this, make a all elite wrestling with like all these other uh, people that were involved in creating all elite wrestling. That was still ultimately Tony Khan's decision. And with that being said, like a lot of us have to trust in his vision and trust in his decision making. So it's like, all right, Captain, I'm riding with you on this. And so you, I sat right next to him and I watched it and I was like, how are you feeling? He's like, feeling good. I'm like, if you're feeling good, I'm feeling good too. And you got to ride with it. And regardless if it was a positive, negative, people felt. Like, it's no different than watching TMZ. <laughs> like, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I'm like, y'all want to talk about, like, these, uh, you want to talk about, like, oh, y'all want to watch good TV. Y'all watch reality TV all the time when, you know, people really, you know. That's so, right. Absolutely. Like, I'm like, okay, I don't see no difference. Y'all going to feel some type of way. And guess what? We're going to keep going on Wednesdays and Thursdays, <laughs> Fridays and Saturdays. Y'all are welcome to join us. But they felt like if you feel something, I'm for it. You know, negative, positive, whatever. But you all tuned in and watched the pay-per-view. And you all tuned in and watched a positive outcome to that pay-per-view and felt good. For the majority, I would like to say a high majority, people felt something good at the end of that pay-per-view following something that just like mm, indifferent feeling yeah didn't know how you felt yeah you didn't know and sometimes you're not even gonna really get to the understand like okay i finally have a decision on how i felt about that you might get that three months from now seeing how things play out but you got to play you got to watch things play out and then you'll finally come to a decision and a conclusion on how you felt about something that felt indifferent yeah, it's a great uh, great way to describe it. I think you're in the entertainment business, promotion business, a lot of different business, and you just said the word, if you can feel it, if you can mission feel it. accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways. It. Well, they can yeah. feel Swerve Strickland as AEW world champ. We can, too. We can see it. That belt's nice, man. Boom. You can go anywhere without it now. No. Oh, I need a backpack. <laughs> that thing is not light. <laughs> I work out, and I'm like, I don't think I want to work out today carrying this thing all day. Uh, that's but it's, awesome. It's, uh, it's, I'm, I'm blessed to like, carry the weight of the, that championship physically. And the history behind it and the responsibility behind it. I feel truly blessed. Uh, well, uh, good luck uh, this week in Jacksonville and uh, on the rest of the journey and the rest of the story, man. We appreciate you stopping by for Thank a while, you. hanging out with us here on the Action Sports Jacks 24 7 Network.